On Tomorrow's World Today, we explore the cutting-edge advances that are shaping four different worlds. The world of inspiration, where the wonders of the natural world amaze and inspire us. The world of creation, where ideas come to life from traditional arts. The world of innovation, where ideas and inventions move us all forward. The world of production, where innovations are mass-produced to improve our lives. From Invention Land World Headquarters, here's your host, George Davison. Hi everyone, I'm George Davison. You know the goal of any innovation is to make existing products better. And the evolution of heating and cooling systems in America is an excellent example of progress over time. The 19th century introduced us to radiators, which brought consistent warmth into our homes and workplaces. With radiators, the concept of central heating began to take shape. And then, in the 20th century, we ushered in a technological revolution. From systems that circulated warm air through ducts, to ventilation and air conditioning systems that brought relief from scorching outdoor temperatures. The boundaries of comfort were stretched. This changed how we lived, worked, and interacted within our spaces. Today, the demand for cooling is increasing. But how do we meet this rising need and keep sustainability and energy efficiency in mind? We meet it with innovations that digitally connect buildings and with the growth of solutions that allow us to store energy. Imagine a system that doesn't just heat and cool in real time, but also stores extra energy for when we need it the most. I'm sending Greg, our field reporter, to the world of innovation in the Twin Cities. I heard there's an emerging technology that's gonna change the way we live. Humans, we love to be comfortable. But as we look at the challenges that we face in today's world, we have to make choices around that comfort that prioritize sustainability. I'm at White Bear Lake in Minnesota to meet with John Sustar and the experts at Train Technologies to discuss some exciting and innovative ways that we'll stay comfortable responsibly in tomorrow's world. Hi, John. Hey, Greg. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, John, We've all heated and cooled our homes for such a long time. We kind of take it for granted. We really don't think about the energy use involved or the environmental impact. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so cooling in buildings is complex. And it's complex because there's a wide variety of building types out there from hospitals, schools, retail stores. But these cooling systems in buildings are energy hogs. You know, heating and cooling systems typically account for 40% of the overall energy consumption in buildings. And that energy usage translates into environmental impacts in a few different ways. One of the largest ways is the carbon emissions associated with that energy, whether that's coming from the electric grid or coming directly from the equipment. And we're helping our customers reduce their environmental impact by improving the energy efficiency of their buildings. Well, that's great, obviously reducing that impact is, is key, but you have to keep the humans in the building comfortable as well. Yep, so keeping the people comfortable in that building is key because you know if they're not comfortable, they're not gonna be productive. Right, what, what are some of the other cooling needs that a building might have? Yep, so comfort cooling is only a part of the energy equation for, for cooling in buildings. There's other applications out there that are even more intensive from a cooling standpoint. One of the fastest growing markets out there for cooling is data centers. From an energy standpoint, what would be the difference between a regular building and a data center? Yeah, so data centers are among the most energy intensive building types. They often consume 10 to 50 times more energy per square foot than your typical office or commercial space. And the cooling systems within that building is about 40% of that building's energy usage. What would some of the consequences of not keeping your data center cool? So those server rooms and data centers emit a lot of heat. And if those data centers aren't cooled properly, that leads to downtime and that leads to potential network failures. And there's lots of organizations out there from hospitals and schools and banks that depend on reliable networks. But believe it or not, the same equipment that we use for cooling can also be used for heating. And we're scaling that technology up to make buildings even more sustainable. So the, this sounds like technology we might see around our homes, but on a much larger scale. 
Yep, so the technology is called heat pumps. Heat pumps have been around for decades, but we're starting to see a resurgence in this technology due to innovation, making this technology more capable. Also, they offer us a way to move from fossil fuels into electrified heating. But because of their name, heat pump, people may not realize that heat pumps not only heat, but they can also cool. And they do this by moving heat from one place to another. When they're operating in heating, they're moving heat from the outside of the building and moving that heat inside. And they can even do this when it's really cold outside. When operating in cooling, they're moving heat from the inside of the building to the outside of the building. Well, what would be the advantages to a heat pump as opposed to a more traditional system like a boiler? Yep, so boilers create heat, whereas heat pumps move heat. And that process of moving heat from one place to another is a lot more efficient. It takes one unit of energy to move three units of heat, which effectively makes this technology three times more efficient than your traditional boiler. Okay, well, I mean, is there a, some place maybe in town where we can get a look at how this technology works in action? Just down the road, there's the Science Museum of Minnesota, and they're using our cooling equipment to also do heating. Let's take a look. Sounds good, let's do it.